This is the part of the video that I say what the video is about, which is just me repeating the title and you just waiting for the intro to play. I was recording and uh, my computer just crashed. Like, I don't know, it turned off and now my world is missing. I also recorded the entire video and th because I didn't finish recording it, all of the files are corrupted. So now I can't do anything. So now we just have to go into the backup files. We, we go to here, we copy this local data and after restoring the files, yay, there we are again. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about your spheres. Oh, I just realized you have shorts under here. Good, good, good job, devs. There are six different spheres you're gonna be getting your hands on throughout your time playing Power World. The Pal Sphere, the Mega Sphere, the Giga Sphere, the Hyper Sphere, the Ultra Sphere, and the Legendary Sphere. The Pal Sphere you're gonna be able to craft at the beginning of the game as far as level two. The Mega Sphere at 14, Giga at 20, Hyper at 27, Ultra at 35, Legendary at 44. And their power is somewhat diminishing. The Mega Sphere from the Pal Sphere has a catch rate twice as high. Giga Sphere is 40 33%, then 30%, then 23%, then 16%, but that number is not nearly all that's factored into how a pal is actually caught. Whenever you go to catch a pal in the wild, your ability to catch it depends on a few different things. One, the species of pal. Two, the current level it is. Three, the current health amount that it has left. Four, if it has any statuses like on fire, shocked, what type of sphere you're using also makes a difference, as well as if it's facing you or it's facing away, how many Lift Monk effigies you already have, and some few other things, like is it an Alpha or is it a Lucky? This level 4 Cadava has a back bonus of 31, and this non-Lucky Cadava has a back bonus of 40. This level 3 Cadava has a back bonus of 45. And right here, I have a breakdown on the total amount of resources that's required for you to go ahead and craft these spheres. This is the amount of resources to craft 10 spheres, mostly because some of the later spheres require cement, and that's made at a rate of 1 to 10, so for these to be even numbers, 10 just seemed easier. You're also going to have the option to craft carbon fiber using wood, which you should absolutely never ever do unless you have an extreme overabundance of wood. You should always reserve your wood for charcoal. I'm going to assume that you are going to be making your carbon fiber via coal. For you to go ahead and make 10 PAL spheres, you're going to need a total of 80 stone and 30 wood. Some of this stone is going to be converted into PAL fragments, and that's how all of these numbers are actually written up, such as ore is going to be required to make ingots. So once you're making mega spheres, you're going to need 20 ore to make 10 ingots for 10 spheres, so we have 20 ore listed here. This is your most basic resources that are required for you to make your spheres in the game. So anytime that I'm throwing spheres and they have a 10% chance to actually catch, I'm going to be throwing the base sphere. It's only once it's below 10% that I'm like, okay, the next level up is always better. Now an important core concept is that this guy right here, Vixie, if Vixie is working at your camp and going over to a ranch, then anytime that Vixie is going to be present, you're going to be getting pal spheres as well as arrows and coins absolutely for free. That has to do with Vixie's ability, which is called Dig Here, and it sometimes digs up items on the ground when it's assigned to the ranch. In my mind, as long as you have a Vixie, you get free pal spheres, the base level ones, not like, you know, anything better than that. So because the base pal spheres are, in my mind, completely free, when I'm over to a land ball and has a 51% chance to catch, I'm yeah. definitely 100% of the time always going to throw a base pal sphere. And honestly, I'm not even going to wait around to see if it's going to catch. Is level one Cadava 57%? Great. I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to go to the next pal and I'm going to rapid fire through everything. I'm going to catch all of these pals or not. Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'm just throwing these pal spheres. If they catch, they catch. If they don't, they don't. That's absolutely fine. The fact that a lot of these pals are timid in their attitude if I don't initiate combat and they're just going to run away, making the back strikes even easier. <laughs> Sign me up for all of that. See, that one deflected for, uh, cause he aggroed on me, but we're still at 51% thanks to my effigies. That guy up there, what's your catch rate? 1.79%. And with a level two sphere, 17%. So in that situation, I would definitely use a level two. 
because I've already unlocked level 3, we're at 34%, the Ultra Sphere is at 86%, and the Legendary is at 93%. Because that Ultra Sphere to that Legendary Sphere is somewhat of a uh, diminishing return, I am probably just going to be going for a regular Ultra Sphere at the 86%. Nice. And the sooner you actually go through the beginning of the game and you start doing this reckless catching, the sooner you're going to be power leveling through the beginning of the game, which I definitely 100% of the time recommend. Oh, great. Got Pal Spheres in that chest. The only reason I don't have over 100 Pal Spheres right now is because of corrupt footage that I already did all of this. So many times. And even if the math made it exactly the same, the same amount of resources for the same amount of percentage chance that it can catch, the one thing you're not taking into account is your actual time. Your time is valuable. Whether you ha only have two hours a day to play video games or 12 hours a day to play video games, your time could always be better prioritized somewhere else. So once you hit level 20 and you have the opportunity to start crafting gigaspheres, no longer make megaspheres. Your number one priority, soon as you hit level 20, should be get your iron in order. Start making as much iron as you can. Pick a location that also has coal or a second location that has coal. That way you can prioritize. Get your dig toys, get your Anubis, start breeding up, breeding down, getting the traits that you want before you start jumping onto your higher levels. And chances are just by doing all this mining and resources, you might actually just hit level 27 and have the ability to make hyperspheres. Now, once you start getting into the hyper and ultra spheres at level 27 and 35, you start running into a little bit of an issue because you have to have the bone and the pal fluid. Now, if you caught yourself your level one wandering merchant at the starting area, fantastic. If you don't have yourself a wandering merchant, here in the middle of the desert, it's gonna be a little warm, so you have to have heat protection. I'm pretty sure level two in the middle of the day. But once you make your way over here, whereas a lot of the wandering merchants that you're gonna be finding in the wild are level 30 or higher, this guy's only level 12. Meaning that you can catch him at a much lower level. And if you're level 27 and you have hyperspheres, that hypersphere with a back shot is a 15% chance to catch. And that's before any damage or anything else. Oh, I didn't expect you to do that, Rayhound. Okay, cool. Let's, let's get out of here for, you know, crime and stuff. After you catch him, he's gonna be selling you bone. And that's gonna be half of your battle. And then it's only a matter of you getting pal fluid for you to actually make cement. Now, pal fluid, you get that anywhere you want, but just like how I was showing before with recklessly going and throwing those base pal spheres, and if you took my advice and unlocked the other starting areas, here at the Forgotten Island, you're gonna be able to find celery in the water everywhere. These Tfint, Back bonus, I'm at 46%, 37% at a level four. These Celerays, they're timid, they like to run away, 41%. And even without increasing my catch rate or increasing the drop rate of items or anything else, I'm going around, I'm getting all of these pal fluids that I need. In addition, Celeray do have the ability to breed down to Anubis and other high powerful pals. 10 out of 10 recommend. These are the guys that you should be using anytime that you need more pal fluids. That quick trip that I just did, uh, 10 pal fluid. So that's enough for 50 hyperspheres or 33 ultra spheres or 20 legendary spheres. Once I unlock hyper, I make pal, giga, and hyper. But once I unlock ultra, I immediately stop making hyper. Yes, it's more stone. Yes, it's more ore, but it's also more coal. And as long as you're not using the ultras for everything and you're still also using the gigas, you're gonna be absolutely fine on your resources. Now, Austin, should we talk about the sphere that's in the game's code that lets you steal other people's pals? Maybe in the game's code exists this. This is called a radar sphere. It's currently not able to be purchased or anything else. It's considered rank three, so uncommon. <clears throat> and the internal code is palsphere underscore robbery. And its description is a sphere that captures pals when thrown. Though it has a low chance of success, it can forcibly capture another person's pal. This seems like something that this seems like something that they developed and maybe they plan on using it in the future. Maybe it's going to be something that you have the option to turn it on for multiplayer games. Because just having that and being able to steal a random person's pal 
seems very strange and with the current state of how the server needs to communicate with your local data, seems way too easy for you to just cheat, make everything 100% catch right, and then just steal other people's pals. I mean, that's the purpose of this. Maybe they planned something for those tower bosses, for you to be able to capture those pals. There's no specific information on what these spheres are, when they plan to be implemented, or if they are at all. However, since this is a video about the spheres, I figured I would mention it. Now, once you're at level 44, immediately stop making ultra spheres. Because then you're going to significantly reduce your amount of coal cost from 140 down to 60. And you're going to be like me. And if you developed this base over here at 190 by minus 36, you're going to start covering some of your coal spaces because you're getting too much coal coming in. And you're going to want to start saving that for them just digging up more ore because now you need twice as much. There's also a lot more stone cost, but stone is free and you probably have a lot of Anubis doing work already. In the end game, I'm only using PAL spheres and I rotate some Trixies in whenever I need more. They also have arrows, which I don't really use, but okay for, you know, lower level guys. Giga spheres, because they don't require any bone or PAL fluid or coal, barely any ore. It's just gonna be stone and wood. You can make that for free. In fact, it's been a while since I made them. How much can I make right now without even trying? 66 and what's the only thing holding me up i haven't refined palladium fragments from my stone which i have 31,000 of every time i come back to base i do my lap of gathering all of my items put it into the cooler make sure everyone's actually doing their job and picking stuff up seeing how many palladium fragments i can make which right now is uh oh i can i can make the max amount which is 2000 my general rule of thumb is however much palladium fragments i can make i typically make two-thirds of it if i can make 300 i'll craft 200 and that seems to be the healthy distribution between palladium fragments stone making ore great example right here with charcoal i can make 1300 of it i typically make two-thirds of that number also devs if you're listening i would like to be able to hold this left button and uh and it goes down that'd be so very nice. I then make sure I have 30, 40, 50 gigaspheres, and then I put the rest of my resources into my legendary spheres. I see what I'm gonna need more of in the future, which is palladium fragments. I just told them to make more and we're good. And there we go. Those are the spheres that I actually craft and the ones that I don't craft because they're not worth the investment in items, the investment in time going around and gathering the items. And if you're playing casually and enjoying yourself, you probably don't want to be bothered with that. Stick to your base spheres, stick to your giga spheres that are going to not cost any cement, and then whatever your highest tier of sphere that you can craft is gonna be, do that. But then again, it's your game. It's your playthrough, it's your experience. Feel free to play it however you'd like. This just seems mathematically the best for your time and resources. This video was actually requested by someone in the comment section, which if there's anything you have a question on or you already discovered the answer for yourself, but throughout your time playing the game, leave it in the comment section down below. Back in radio, there was a mindset that was anytime that you have a caller who calls in, that caller is asking a question that a thousand people are thinking. And you, leaving that comment, are going to be asking a question that a thousand people are thinking. So whenever you leave a comment like that and it's a great question, heck yeah, I'm going to make a video on it because, heck, it might have been something that I thought about myself too. Like this math is actually something I did the day after release and I just shared it with my buddies and I, you know, didn't have this channel then. But now that we're here and it's a real channel, we're going hard in the paint. Thank you so much for being here. Till next time, for Austin John Gaming, Austin John out.